Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I'm finally here with this video I've been wanting to do um, comparing the Babylonian Tarot to the new Babylonian Tarot. So this is the deck by uh, Sandra Tabitha Cicero. And this deck is by Roxana Paul with the book um, written by Victor Paul. So I haven't had a ton of time to work with either deck. Uh, this is newer because I have shared that. This I've had for, for years, but I just haven't had a lot of time or the time that I would like to have to devote to studying this deck. Um, but I thought I would still do sort of a... I don't know if this is an unfair comparison, like Mixtress Ray would say, or just a comparison, but whatever. Um, we're here and we're going to do it. Uh, so you'll see, obviously, that these decks do have um, pretty different art styles, but uh, still very fascinating nonetheless. The books, um, just quickly... I need more time to read this because there's, it does have, it does have a lot of good information. I don't know if I ever shared the contents here just to kind of give you an idea. So they do, they do get into a lot of stuff and it's, oh, it's a lot of fun. I really just, I really want to sit down and read this. Um, this one as well. I just adjusted this stupid thing and it's like freaking out on me yet again. Excuse me, everyone. I am so sorry for this. Okay. Um, this one. So just a note. Um, Sandra Cicero is a member of the Golden Dawn. Her deck is very much based on, well, it's, it's a bit more toffee. <laughs> I guess it's got the keywords and everything. Um, like the, the pips, for instance, um, it's like that. I mean, obviously there is illustration as well. It's not just a pip deck, but you'll know what I mean when I go through it. And, um, and yeah, I just wanted to kind of share that. So this also has quite a bit of information in it. I mean, the cards, like she's got, of course, some of, I mean, Ishtar and Tammuz, so she's got um, a lot of the poetry or the the songs that were sort of uh, that go along with that whole story, and some of it is quite spicy. Um, yeah, so just so just to give you there another example, so it's got the keyword. There's the Ten of Wands. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty good information, I have to say. It's not just kind of a straightforward, you know, it means this, blah, blah. It's It really does go into it. It's very much aligned with Babylonian myth and, and story and um, tradition. So I really appreciate that. Also in the back, there is um, the correspondences to the Tree of Life. Let me just show you that. Elements and the Tree of Life. Just to kind of give you an idea, that's for the court cards. So, um, so yeah, a lot was obviously put into it, and I really do appreciate that. Of course, the astrological associations too. So yeah, it's just both very, very good decks, um, different but amazing decks. Also, the Babylonian Tarot has five extra cards. Um, there is, I pulled them aside so. I'm already easily confused as it is. <laughs> I pulled them aside. So you've got um, a Genesis card, which came comes before the full. And then you have the Carob suit, which represents spirit um, in the courts. So there's an extra court suit. You can see that. So there's the human-headed spirit, the eagle-headed spirit, the human-headed bull, and the lion-headed spirit. So there's that also extra um, extra suit in the courts uh, with the Babylonian tarot. So I'll just put those aside because I wanted to, knowing me, I'll get thrown off. <laughs> I'll get thrown off um, and confused. So yeah. Um, 
Goodness, I didn't realize how thick this tag was. Oh, I'm doing great today. Okay, I hope that's clear. Really hope that's clear. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go through this to be honest, and just I mean honestly, I just I kind of want to see how they compare to. Oh yeah, there's the backs. So can you all see this okay? I'm afraid like it's not clear enough, but yeah, I I love these both obviously. Um, just. On a personal level, it's, you know, for me, it's significant um, because of culture, ancestry, uh, a teaching tool for my sons, um, just something, something, uh, the way I can, I guess, sort of honor lineage and ancestry as well on a personal level. So, um, <clears throat> I love that card. So, yeah. I'm so glad that these decks exist. I'm glad they were made with such um, love, intention, and respect. I'm, I'm really grateful for that. So I'm so glad that we have these. Now, I checked. I don't believe that the Babylonian Tarot, this one, is available anymore. I, I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain it is not available anymore. I'm sure you can still find it in places. Obviously, um, the new Babylonian Tarot is available. You could just Google new Babylonian Tarot, Roxana Paul. It comes up. Um, it ships from Australia. It didn't, it actually didn't take too long, to be honest. I was quite pleasantly surprised. So that is definitely um, uh, easily found. I do love these two. I do. Like, I, I know I was kind of taken aback by this death card because, you know, obviously it does um, appropriately coordinate or correspond to Erishka Gal. And Erishka Gal for me is, well, she can be seen as sort of another face of Inanna, another face of the goddess. So I guess depending on how, how you see it or how you're seeing it in that moment, but both very well done, of course, so. So see, there's temperance in the deck and there's a more illustrated RWS-ish <laughs> temperance. So, yeah. Um, but again, like all the, the stories and descriptions of, because what we have here, of course, well, this is, this is a, a good one. Um, Marduk and Tiamat, Tiamat being sort of the primordial mother goddess um but again a lot of this also sort of illustrates the the time when patriarchy overthrew the matriarchy and then well we haven't had a moment's peace since have we so um i thought this was very very well done in that in that sense and yeah Bo uh, both powerful tower cards but i do like how we have sort of the correspondences here and then the story um, and the story that follows behind that, just sort of adding an extra layer, I suppose, to, to the meaning of the card. So I'm sorry, guys, I'm not going to like ramble endlessly. <laughs> I don't want you to be here forever, but, um, I do love these decks very much. Also something that is, is so interesting. The fact that, you know, when you go through these stories, like you've got so many, um, so there's the Genesis, right? The creation story. There's the, for instance, the flood, right? Um, the death and resurrection of Inanna. I mean, all these things we've heard uh, exist in scripture. So this is ancient Babylon. Um, we know how people are connected and we know how stories are told and um, passed along and sort of then written down right and so it's just fascinating to see all the similarities and parallels of similar myths existing through time and culture and and space and everything so yeah it's very interesting to me
Again, both, to me, very beautiful decks. I wouldn't be able to decide between the two of them. Um, so, because they're both beautiful in their own way, uh, because obviously two different art styles, but still similar. Like, look at these two, right? <laughs> Similarities exist, so it's nice. Yeah, I did mention that um, the new Babylonian tarot is probably one that I want to work with in um, at or close to the spring equinox. So I think that's what's going to happen for me. I'm I am starting to feel the pull towards the deck now, as. <clears throat> Our days do get longer here in this hemisphere and um, it's a lot brighter outside and we all know how I feel about that. But anyways, <laughs> um, it's good to kind of have, have a project, I guess, <laughs> or have something to sort of look forward to, to getting into or to diving into and enjoying. So I do love that Knight of Pentacles. Oh, it's so beautiful. This this deck, it feels very lush. I think it really does feel. It does kind of transport you to that time. It has that magic about it, so it is it is quite beautiful. Um, but again, I love them both. So I do love the art style in this one as well. I mean, yeah, they're both equally powerful decks to me. Beautiful Ace of Cups here. So as I mentioned, the new Babylonian Tarot is, is very Rider weight. I mean, it is something that you can just, if you know the system, really well you just pick up and go I mean it doesn't take much to um to to kind of get to know it and to read with it so it's not an issue at all um I do feel like the Babylonian is a bit has a bit more going on because of all the various correspondence I mean of course you could just pick it up and read it absolutely but I mean for me I feel like I want to um I don't know I kind of want to dive into those correspondences and um have that extra you know bit of information see there's yeah this is the flood this is alluding to the flood there's a lot going on in this card so yeah Queen of Cups is my card according to the Zodiac so of course it's going to be a card I always look at and I'm not let down by either so um, I appreciate both depictions of course. <clears throat> okay I think we're in the last suit now. Uh, look at that there.
almost at the end. <laughs> Okay, there's that. Okay, so <laughs> got through it. So that was just a comparison between the Babylonian and the new Babylonian. I'm not gonna lie, I probably prefer these backs just because. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just wanted to share. I, I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have either of these decks, what do you think of them? Um, do you have a preference? I honestly don't. I, I I love them both and they're both kind of they're they're different enough that I love them for different reasons. So yeah, that's it. Um thank you for watching and <laughs> hopefully I'll be back a bit sooner with another video. I just wanted to do this one before I started really working with um with the deck. So yeah, thanks and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.